Hey guys, this is Anshu and once again I'm back with the third tutorial of biology section from AIPMT 2008 question paper. I know you all are working very very hard to crack neat with flying colors and trust me, these questions will really boost your confidence as well as your score. Guys, what we used to do in the previous tutorials, we will be following the same thing. That is, you will read the question, you will try to answer it on your own and then I'll tell you the answer as well as the explanation of it. And if you like this tutorial and find it useful, you can just follow me on my Unacademy profile. I hope it's useful to you. So without wasting any time, let's just start. So here is the question number 26 in front of you which is in continuation with the previous tutorial. What you see basically is a cross section of a single loop of human cochlea. And according to this question, you have to tell which one of the following four options correctly explains what is A, B, C or D. So just give it a try. I just hope your answer was right. But the correct answer is option number 2. The A part which is the bluish liquid is perilymph. The B is tectorial membrane. C the smaller bluish part is endolymph. And D though not given is actually the it's the organ of corti. Okay now we are moving to the next question. Which type of white blood cells are concerned with the release of histamine? Histamine is actually vasodilator and the natural anticoagulant heparin. So you have to tell which one of the following types of WBCs releases histamine and heparin. So just give it a try. I hope your answer was right. The correct answer for this question is option number 4 that is basophils. Guys, basophils is the type of WBC which releases histamine as well as heparin. Basophil is also the WBC which is found in the least number in our body. Though it's very very useful. Okay, let's just move to the next question. Next question is Thermococcus, Methanococcus and Methanobacterium exemplify. Basically it has been asked which type of bacteria are they? Okay, I just hope you guessed it right. Though it was a bit confusing question, you might guess confused between option 3 and option 4. Still, the correct answer is option number 3. Yes, why I will tell you. Thermococcus, Methanococcus and Methanobacterium are actually a type of Archibacteria. And since they are the most advanced type of bacteria, they contain protein which is homologous to the eukaryotic histone proteins. That's why the option 3 is the most correct answer for this question. Now we are going to the next question. Next question is, which one of the following is being tried in India as a biofuel substitute for following fuels? You can answer it if your GK is good. It's a very good question actually. You can just note it down if you want. I think you would have got it. But the correct answer is option number 3 actually. Jetropa. Jetropa is actually a plant or a fruit as well. From which biodiesel was, uh, biodiesel was extracted. That's why this, is, this was tried in India once as a biofuel substitute for fossil fuels. Now we are moving to the next question. Question number 30. Dry indiescent single seeded fruit formed from bicarpillary syncarpus inferior ovary is. So just try to guess which one of the following contains all these characters. You'll have to learn it. It's a very important question from morphology chapter and such type of questions are frequently asked in need. So give it a try to it. So the correct answer is option number 4 that is Sipsala. So guys Sipsala are the types of fruit which have got dry indecent single seeded fruit and they are formed from bicarpillary syncarpus inferior ovary. Okay, now let's just move on to the next question. Next question is question number 31. 
it's a very easy question i hope you answer it well which one of the following codon is correctly matched with their function or the signal for the particular amino acid it's a very very easy question you must answer it well okay so the correct answer is option number 4 uag uga are stop codons and rest three options are incorrect so there are total three types of stop codons actually uag uga and the third one is uaa just remember it it's a very important point now the next question next question question number 32 Select one of the following pairs of important features distinguishing netum from cycas and pinus and showing affinities with angiosperms that is you have to choose which one of the following point distinguishes netum from cycas and pinus but at the same time relates it with angiosperms just give it a try it's a bit tricky yet interesting question So the correct answer is option number four. Once again, the presence of vessel elements and absence of archegonia. Actually, guys, the cycas and pinus are gymnosperms and they lack ele uh, vessel elements, but they have got archegonia. And at the same time, angiosperms have got vessel elements, but they don't have archegonia. That's why netum is actually a connecting link between angiosperms and gymnosperms. Hence, the correct answer for this question goes option number four. Now we are moving forward to the next question. Question number thirty-three. Earthworms have no skeleton, but during burrowing, the anterior end becomes turgid and acts as a hydraulic skeleton. It is due to which reason? Just point out the correct reason. I hope you do it well. Good luck. So the correct answer is option number three, that is silomic fluid. Actually, what happens whenever the earthworm tries to burrow, the silomic fluid gets and it collects at the anterior end. That's why it becomes turgid and acts as a hydraulic skeleton. So the correct answer goes option number three, silomic fluid. Now the next question is. Question number thirty-four. Which one of the following is the true description about an animal concern? So you have to read the options and you have to tell which one of the following is the true description about the animal which is given in front of it. It would be a very easy question. Just give it a try. Okay. So the animal which is correctly described is cockroach. Guys, I would like to inform you one thing. Before it was. Uh, known that the cockroach has been included but the earthworm and frog are not there in the syllabus but guys this is a wrong uh, perception that you are having this is what happened was few two questions from frogs were asked so please don't neglect earthworm and frog read them too though they are, they were not included in the neat syllabus anything can happen be ready for everything so we will be moving on to the next question next question is question number 35 which extra embryonic membrane in humans prevents desiccation of the embryo inside the uterus just point out which one of the following is correct okay so guys actually amnion is the layer which prevents desiccation or say dryness of the embryo inside the uterus amnion is the layer which keeps it moist Now the next question question number 36 about 70% of total global carbon is found in it's a very easy question i hope you can answer it so the correct answer is option number 1 that is oceans i know if you were not knowing the answer you are shocked to know that oceans contain 70% of total global carbon but guys this is true neither the forests nor grasslands nor the agro ecosystems contain this much of carbon so the correct answer is oceans actually they contain carbon in the form of living beings or the dead matter present in the oceans okay now we are moving to the next question question number 37 
Human insulin is being commercially produced from a transgenic species of. Please do choose the correct answer. It is a very easy question. I hope your answer was right. And if it was not, you need to read NCRT very, very thoroughly. So the correct answer is Escherichia. Actually, the Escherichia coli species is genetically modified, uh, and from that. the human insulin is extracted and hence it is commercially produced from escherichia coli now we are moving on to the next as well as the last question it's a very easy question vacuole in a plant cell you have to tell which one of the following describes vacuole very well so just give it a try i guess you might have answered it correctly Yes, the correct answer is option number four. Vacuole is actually a membrane-bound structure, and it contains water as well as the excretory substances. The membrane of vacuole is called tonoplast, and it is a single-layered membrane. And what the vacuole does is it stores stores the excretory substances and slowly excrete them out of the cell because they are no more useful for the cell. Now this is where the tutorial ends I hope you enjoyed it and I hope most of your answers were correct and if they were not please don't be disheartened keep reading keep working hard you will do it I believe you good luck all the best thank you tada bye bye